Hey, everybody, it's Greg Harrelson here with the Level Up podcast, uh, and we're coming at you with another episode of a, you know, an, a, a guest that I'm excited to have on, um, and you'll probably learn a little bit more about why I'm excited to have this guest on. I've got with us today Antoine Thomas, and he is out of Lafayette, Indiana, and I will be the first to admit, Antoine, I have no clue where <laughs> Lafayette, Indiana is. I don't know, know if I've been to Indiana, but you said it's near Purdue University, and I know yep. in sports, I have seen Purdue be significant in a few different sports at a few different times in my lifetime. So mm -hmm. um, when you say Purdue, I understand that. And, and, uh, and the company you're with, Antoine, is Silver Lining Real Estate Group, again, out of Lafayette. Yep. So, Antoine, Thank you for joining me on the Level Up podcast. Um, Absolutely. I, I, I look at you. I actually would say I would, I'm friends with you, which is like really kind of odd. And the reason why I say it's odd is because I'm not one to throw around the word, oh, he's my friend, but I've <laughs> only actually seen him one person, one time in my life. Like I've only maybe seen you one time physically in my life. But um, I don't know. We 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 got to know each other years ago. We um, you know, you're a LeBron fan. I'm a Kobe fan. So you know, we have we have that argument that's ongoing as to who is the best. But anyways, I, we all know that everyone knows that it's Kobe. <laughs> but that's okay. I give you that. But ever since that time, we have kind of stayed in touch. If it wasn't just a little text or a little message here and there. And um, just, I guess, grown, grown a little bit of a friendship that way. So again, Absolutely. thank you for being here with me, um, uh, Anton. So why, why don't we just start about that, uh, that, I think it was Jeff Cohn event, you know? So yes. where did we meet and, um, and what were you up to? I, I know that you've been doing a, a few podcasts and people have been featuring you about some of the cool things that you've done and how you've been able to step out of production. Um, and how did you do this? And how did you do that? And what does that look like now? And, you know, there's a lot of information out there about that. What I would like to know, do to, to know is how did you go from where you were to where you are? Like, what are some of the things that you did, some of the things that you failed at um, and whatnot? But it all started when we met. Do you know when we met? What, how, what year that was? I want to say that was 2018. Okay. I want to say 2018, uh, yeah. May of 2018, I believe. So we're approaching on three years then. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that was Omaha, Jeff Cohn's was um, event. I, it was so, I mean, it might've been a team building event. I can't remember that. It was the a team building event. Yeah. Yep. Good. So, yeah. so, and, and before I start, I, one of my life principles is to show love to people who show love to me. Mm. And for you, you've shown a lot of love just from being you. Um, doing your job every day, giving back to the community, the real estate community. And I will say, we talk about LeBron and Kobe, who's <laughs> the best. I think we will, I think a lot of people will agree that Michael Jordan is the GOAT. Okay. I'm in. I'm in. So I, I, I will say this. I will say this. You, Greg Harrelson, I want to give you your flowers. You are my Michael Jordan of real estate. So yeah. I just want to show love to you because you show love to me. So well, yeah, we met. It's a pleasure and it's an honor to be on the podcast with you as well. So we met in Omaha and leading up to that, let me just talk about leading up to that. So yeah. been in the business since 2015. Uh, prior to that, <clears throat> I was a college boy and I was just trying to figure it out. I initially was on pace to become a lawyer and oh. I was conditioned by my parents, by my mom. I was raised by a single mother. She always said, son, you're going to either be a doctor or a lawyer. All right. So, cause, and I'm gonna touch on that. Why, why that's so critical. I'm gonna touch on that a little later, but you say you're going to either be a doctor or a lawyer. So I chose lawyer, went to Purdue university, was on pace to, you know, get my law degree and uh, get my master's, but we, me and my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, we got pregnant, but our first child. So we needed money. So I, I dropped out of school and I was working at a factory job, making good money, but it wasn't for me right? So I had to figure out what was I going to do with my life. And I, and number one started with, I got to, I had to be honest with myself. I can't work. I can't be in a career or work a job because somebody else tells me I need to. I'm, I'm living my life. I'm not living their life. 
So number one, I had to be honest with myself. What makes me happy? What brings me pure joy? And with that, what is something that I could provide to the market that would compensate me for what I'm worth? And I chose real estate from a book I read and it was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm. Changed my life forever. Read that book, got into Dave Ramsey. If you're familiar with Dave Ramsey, he, he's a big real estate fan as well. I got into real estate and I've always been a seeker of knowledge. So before I even took the test to get licensed, I was already researching the top dogs in the industry. Who am I going to listen to? Because I, I do believe, going back to my mother, and I love, I love you, mama. I love you, mom. But choosing to be a doctor or a lawyer, I was choosing something that wasn't, that I didn't choose. So finding who I was going to listen to, I was going to make sure I chose the right person to listen to and not in, in a, a business that I could actually see, you know, actually making it through any market. Because I quickly found out that real estate is, is a, it cycles right? And one model won't work in a down market where mm. maybe it's killing it right now. So who did I find? I found Greg. <laughs> and there are, you just sometimes know, you just sometimes know who, who you need to listen to. And I always believed that in order to be a great leader, because I always wanted to be a leader of a company, that I need to be an even better follower. I followed Greg every single podcast he was on, every word he said, every script he shared, anything. I was writing down, I was taking notes, I was repeating, listening to it. That was my life. I, my new job was to learn. It wasn't even real estate, it was to learn. Here comes the team building works, uh, um, summit with Jeff Cohn. Jeff Cohn, thank you for throwing that work, that, uh, that summit because I was able to actually meet Greg and it just further solidified what I already knew about him. So being around people like that, you learn so much. That's why, so to kind of summarize that little beginning portion, you got to first look at yourself in the mirror and realize what do you want to be? Who do you want to become? Can you make a profit off being that? Which a lot of times, if you are providing value that is in demand, you're going to get, you're going to be compensated over time if you just stick with it. Then you need to find who can I follow? Who can I follow? Who's winning at a high level and really running a true business? And who, who in, in my opinion, you know, again, he's my Michael Jordan, so I followed him. We connected. And ever since then, I just, every little thing I learned from him, and, and there are some other mentors that I have, I just put in place. So I learned, and then I took action. Seeker of knowledge, man of action. That is, that is cool, man. And I, you know, and thank you for all the kind words. I surely didn't um, invite you on the podcast <laughs> for you to just promote me all the time, but I, 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 but I accept that acknowledgement and I accept those compliments you're giving me because I know they're Absolutely. so sincere. I really do. And, and you're touching on something that is so cool. Cause now I'm reflecting. Okay. Well, when I came into the business, I, I was like failing out of college. Like I, I was five years in college and I hadn't made it to, I, I think I might've been a sophomore. Maybe I had sophomore mm. worth credits after five years. So I surely didn't apply myself in, in, at any level and I needed a job. So I got into real estate because that was what my dad was doing. So mm -hmm. I kind of worked for him part-time. And, and then what I did within the first year or 18 months, you know, um, I ended up being prospected by, mm. uh, by Mike Ferry. And I went to a Mike Ferry event. Mm -hmm. And then I, for 20 straight years, I, I attended Mike Ferry events and was in Mike Ferry coaching for 20 straight years. And through that process, I also had people that I looked up to. I remember a lady out of uh, uh, Boulder, I think it's Boulder, Colorado. Her name's uh, Karen Bernardi, still practicing real estate today phenomenal real estate agent. And I remember years and years ago, just like, how can I be like Karen Bernardi? I bought her, right. her book, her, her, her tapes. She, there was cassette tapes of how you did things. <laughs> I bought the cassette tape. As a matter of fact, I might even have, I got a whole bunch of Mike Ferry cassette tapes sitting right next to me. I'm never going to let them go. Um, but you know, I kind of did the same thing. I totally immersed myself in, in, yes. and um, I, I said, I, I, I kind of say, you say you're the seeker of knowledge. I say that I'm a lifetime student. Mm. 
mm-hmm. of the industry. And um, mm-hmm. so that's great. So, so we met in, 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 um, you know, in Omaha and where were you at that time in your business? Were, were you, cause I remember you had another uh, a man with you, a young man with you that it seemed like you were mentoring mm-hmm. um, he, great guy. I think he's still mm-hmm. with you now, yep. um, but I remember him. I, I could remember his face and his stature, tall guy. And mm-hmm. um so where were you in, in, in production um, at that time? And, and, and then talk to us about your growth, some of the things that you did and maybe some of the things that you screwed up that kind of helped you continue to elevate to where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. So you're, you're referring to Charles Bell, who was just, uh, just got done making some phone calls, some prospecting calls, and now he's headed to some closings. So That's he's awesome. still here with me. He's, still, yeah. he's a beast as well. And he highly respects you as well. Yeah. Um, nice where I was at that time was I was a solo agent. So Charles was one of the first, and I hand, I hand selected him as like, I had a, a, actually it was from a listing consultation. I was going to sell his home and I was like, Hey, have you ever considered getting into real estate? So at that time I was solo doing my own thing, selling around 50 homes a year Yeah. and uh, just running everywhere. Man, I was very blessed throughout the gate to, again, know what I needed to do that was going to, the activities that were going to yield me the highest results I was doing. So I got a lot of business and I was working 60, 70 hours a week. Right. So when I brought Charles on, I, I was confident I could, I could guide him because it was working for me. I knew I was going to stay plugged in with men like you who are winning at a high level. So when you say I was asking you a lot of questions, mm-hmm. it was, you know, cause I wanted to continue to soak up so I can help him be on his way. But yeah, I was solo dolo. Um, I, I I believe no, you know what? I did have an admin at that at that time. I, I just hired an admin, but I don't even think she was with me a year at that point. But yeah, and then he and then he he has been um, at that time. I don't even know if he was. Um, he may not have even been licensed yet. I, I think you're right. I, I think that's yeah. a possibility because this was really yeah. early on. And because because it was interesting that you brought him to an event, uh, yeah. but it makes sense because he's kind of like your first team member, yeah. right? So yep. yeah, let's go to an event. Let's do this together, you know, and mm-hmm. and, and and learn together. And I just remember he being very raw, uh, very yes. very motivated, very interested, very like plugged in, but raw mm-hmm. when it comes to you know extremely. It, it, I mean, he was he was basically a rookie, if almost pre rookie, you know, because yes. he wasn't really in yet, you know. Yep. So. 50 transactions kind of solo, hiring an, an assistant, you bring this, the, you know, you start kind of building a team, you know, I think you kind of built the team slowly, but mm-hmm. wh- where did you go in a year after that? Like from 50 to what? And and what was your focus? Like, how did you grow the business? What was your, your strategy for growth? So my first strategy, again, I always start with me. So I, I have a formula that I live by. It's be, do, have. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I knew I, I needed to become Charles. Have you done Landmark way, by chance? Have you done no, anything called Landmark? With. Okay. That's a uh-uh. concept. Be, do, have is definitely a concept. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but Charles, see, I knew that who I needed, who I needed to become to run an organization like Greg's, right? Charles is coming from a 16 year career and is taking a chance of, of working with me. Mm. So I was continuing to just work on my mindset. How can, and, and I'm also selling homes and I'm also helping my admin learn the business as well and kind of guiding her on what systems to build out. So the, in 2019, we did about 75 homes and I was about uh, 45, 50 of those. And then Charles did the rest and he was part-time. And then again, when, when we went to Omaha, I don't even know if he was like in the business yet. So he was still trying to find his way, but I mean, again, working 70 hours a week, trying to build out systems, have an admin, have one, one buyer uh, agent in Charles. We were in the process in 2019, bringing another agent on who's still with me today. And, um, and, and that was the focus, but it started with me. Like I knew that I had to have a long-term vision from day one. What, what was the outcome? What did I want to get out of this business? And not today, but 10 years from now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had to have upfront agreements with my family. Hey, my love, I'm going to be working 
and I'm going to put a lot of hours in, and I've never done this before. All I ask is for you to give me grace. Have faith. We will get to this point. Kids, you know, same thing. I had to get the upfront agreements from my family because we all understand family. If you don't have the support at home, it, it's mm-hmm. very difficult to in this business. Period. So you got buy-in. Anything. You were getting buy-in. buy-in. You were making sure you had buy-in before you started Absolutely. moving. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And I had to be honest with myself too. I had to be honest with what am I good at? What am I not good at? What yields me the highest results on my on my my time in my investment? I know you, you speak on RLT a lot. Mm-hmm. And I learned that concept as well. So it made hiring the admin very easy because yeah, I, I wasn't wanna, good at that. I want to bring yep. something up. I want to slow it down for a minute because see, okay. like, you know, people are listening out there and saying, man, that's cool. You know, he got buy-in from his family, right? But yes. But I, I don't know maybe if you thought about this before, but I can assure you, you probably felt it afterwards. And for those of you that are listening, one of the significant reasons why you want to get buy-in from your family is because whether you like it or not, they become the most ultimate slash severe accountability people yes. in your life. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, if you're getting buy-in and you're saying, you know, listen to your family and say, hey, look, let me, this is, this is my dream. This is what I'm going for. This is what I believe it's going to take from me. But if it's going to take this from me, then it's also going to require some kind of sacrifices for you as a, as a wife, Mm -hmm. as a partner, as a, as a child. Like these are some of the things that we're all going to experience. And before I get moving, I just want to make sure that you all share in my vision. I want to make sure that you are, that, 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 that you are going to support me, that you, that you're interested in the same things that I'm interested in. Okay. So you set this up. That, that'd be an example of buy-in, right? Yes. And then all of a sudden, now six months go by and you start slacking. The first person <laughs> who's going to remind you mm. that you're slacking is the person that you got by. Well, I thought you were going to do this. So does that mean we're not going to get this anymore? Yeah. You know what I mean, so like that buy in is not only honoring your relationships, but you're actually putting out that vision. And, and asking support, let me tell you, those family members will support you to the highest level if you actually set it up the way that you did. Have you experienced that with your family? Absolutely. And, and I welcomed it. I actually brought, there was times where I told my kids, my, my oldest son at the time, I believe he was maybe five, four or five. And I would say every, every evening when daddy comes home, ask daddy did you fulfill your obligations today did you Mm. find someone to hire you today like i i welcome that my wife another thing so i i told her i was like you know hold me accountable and then i structured even more i went even further i hired the admin young young lady i said hold me accountable hold me accountable i then brought charles in hold me accountable Mm-hmm. Every person, every person in my organization, they, we hold each other accountable. So I have my life structured that way, not just at home, but the people around me, we, that's, that's the way we live. So yeah, great. you gotta, and, and then that builds culture, yeah. right? And the culture and the standards within the organization is built from you being honest with yourself, having your own principles and then being able to translate that into the business culture to where people can thrive. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, a, it's accountability is love. Yeah. Such accountability a leadership is love. nugget, Antoine. Such a leadership nugget is you w- when you ask your team and others to hold you accountable, in order for them, b- believe me, they're all going to be like, yes, because they're going to sincerely yeah. want to help you. Mm-hmm. But in order for someone to hold you accountable, they instinctively or at least subconsciously know that they better be accountable themselves. Because you can't be somebody that like shows up late, 
holding you accountable to show up early. Like, okay, you said you're going to show up at 730. All right, well, I'm going to set my alarm at nine in the morning and I'm going to call you up to make sure you're there at 730. Like that doesn't work. Like I could hold you accountable that way, but because I am not doing something similar, then I actually probably can't hold you accountable. So if I'm going to wake you up or I'm going to say, make sure you're in the office at eight o'clock, I probably am going to meet you there to make sure you're there. Then guess what happens? Now we're both leveling up together. Mm. That's like, yes. that is such a significant leadership nugget. That's where I say, for me in my office, I, I'm, people say, well, why do you still go to the office like every day? You're still there at eight o'clock or 745. It's like, well, I, I lead by example. I can't hold them accountable and then do the exact opposite myself because what I know is with agents, with children, then um, not that they're the same thing, but with agents mm -hmm. or with children or whatnot, people that follow, people will do what you do. They will not mm. do what you say. Yes. So I don't know if you knew this, Antoine, or, and I surely didn't know it when I was doing it. When I was asking people to hold me accountable, I was thinking it was just about me. But what I learned is that was the very thing I needed to do with them in order for them to level up and be more accountable themselves. I didn't know that. That wasn't my strategy. It's something yeah. I learned after the fact. Yeah. So for me, it was both. It was a strategy and I knew that it was going to help everybody. So it was a strategy for all yeah. of us to win. But how did I know that? It's because I'm a seeker of knowledge. I heard you or somebody say that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, awesome. okay, that makes sense. All right. And, and I want to touch on that a little further because being held accountable when you're trying to run a, especially a prospecting based business, like what we have, you have to lead by example. Like Greg mentioned, I was on the phones. I was doing role plays with um, some of my mastermind partners that are all the way across the country at 730 and, and Charles could hear it. I was role playing yeah. with him you know, every single day. I was getting on the phones with him every single day. Then we bring the next person in, same thing. And we just created a synergy in the culture to where now Charles or let's say um, Scott or Tanner, whoever is, is in the office, if somebody make a phone calls and there's going to be a conversation being had. And I don't even, so I had to put the work in first. I have to, number one, I had to get a skill set. I want to, so yeah, I'm going to touch on that real quick. So to, to be able to build out an organization where you don't you're you don't have to be involved in production if you don't want to you're able to help the people within the organization live better lives financially um, spiritually mentally physically and then also be able to profit at a high level to where now you can invest in other companies or just even more in the people in the organization it starts with you doing the work with them, helping guide them to do it, teaching them, holding them accountable, loving on them, but also at the same time, when you love on them, you gotta be honest. And you gotta be ready to, you know, you need a kick in the butt, so let's have this conversation. And I, I do believe that, I, I treat life like boxing. So I've, I've gotten into boxing lately, uh, I used to box when I was younger, so I've gotten back into a, such a great workout, and I, I correlate life to a boxing match. So how are we going to win in this life or this boxing match, which is called life? And it always starts first with talent, like a unique talent or a skill set, okay? Coming into the business, I didn't, my talent really was just, I was okay with delayed gratification. I was okay with that. That, that may be a skill set that I had, um, but mm. what, you, what you have to do is you have to be a seeker of knowledge to, if you don't have that unique skill set, be a seeker of knowledge to go gain that skill. Some people gain skills by going to school, right? If you don't have the unique skill set, go gain a skill. Can I, so you said one of your skill sets is what? Delayed gratification? Being able to like having patience, like working impatiently, but having patience that I know the results will come so, later. So, so can you give us an example of an activity Yeah. that, that you know that there was going to be delayed 
results, delayed gratification, but you stuck with it mentally and then you ended up eventually getting the return, but the, but you had a lot of, high, but your patience was probably tested. G give us a, 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 like a tangible, a, an, an activity that, that applies to that. Oh, an easy one is prospecting. Okay. So I understood the fact that if I talk with 30 people per day for 30 days, the likelihood of me getting a deal on a contract right then is, is lower. Not now, but when I was first starting, I understood I need to build up a pipeline. Mm -hmm. But And I was okay with every single day with the accountability structure I had around me to come in, hit my 30 contacts, no matter what. If I didn't set an appointment, it's okay. Because I knew from experience after just keep doing that, I'll have a day where I set three appointments. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have another day where I set one. The next thing you know, I got two under contract. So now I got two pending. And, and, and I just quickly learned that. And more importantly, I wasn't afraid to fail. So for example, something as small as, I, I would say small to me now, but probably for newer agents is not. It's probably a bigger deal for them, but getting rejected on the phone, right? Just getting rejected. A lot of times that can steer somebody from ever picking up a phone again. Yes. I was willing to, I, I am in a way a perfectionist. So I was very, um, I'm and I learned to be more detail oriented. So I would learn scripts and make sure I get it down before I make calls, but I would still make the call if, if I wasn't hundred percent comfortable. So I would step out of my comfort zone. I would keep making the phone calls. I would keep setting appointments. If I'm not putting on a contract, I would just keep staying attached to the process mm -hmm. and not worrying about the outcome. And I know you talk about that all the time. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and then I also learned that by gaining more skills, because I'm gaining skills now. That is my college, is making these phone calls, listening to you, making some more phone calls, listening to you. That is my college uh, degree. And I realized that, okay, I, I would see other agents and I would say, well, I mean, you have all this knowledge, but you're not putting it to work. So I learned it's not how, it's not how intelligent you are, it's how often you use your intelligence. And the, the intelligent thing to do is to get on the phones and make those phone calls with your skill set that you have available to you. The unintelligent thing to do is to just sit back with all this knowledge and not make phone calls. So that was one skill set. Another thing with the delay, delay gratification was that I was willing to not increase my lifestyle so quickly because number one, I had a vision. I knew what the, what the, what the game was. I knew what the game plan. I knew the game I was playing period. And it all starts again with me. Like I want to make the focus of this podcast, this episode about you got to be real with yourself and work on you before you can lead a powerful organization. Do you know how many agents fought out of the business in the first two years? It's like 80%. And a lot of the, a lot of times it's because they are not who they are not being the person or agent they need to be to be able to have or acquire anything that they want to have. I mean, it's, it's very simple, right? Be, do, have. Become someone so you can do what you need to do to now have everything you want to have in your life. So yeah. I just want to focus on, I mean, it's because it's, I see so many, I had these conversations every single day. Slow down, make sure you learn from the right people. Put the, the knowledge that you now have to work. Again, it's not how intelligent you are. It's how often you use your intelligence. Have delayed gratification. And then celebrate your wins as well. Because a lot of times, like if I set an appointment today, I'm still, I'm still that dude. Mm -hmm. I'm, still, I'm still a beast. If, I, if, I, if I'm able to cut 5% of expenses from the, the overhead for the quarter and have us be more profitable just by cutting out some subscriptions, doing a good job being a leader, uh, a CFO of your company. Yeah. Give yourself your wins and don't allow the losses to turn into a, a failure. A loss, you know, take the loss and turn it into a win. Yeah, you know, when you're leading a team from coming from the place that you're coming from, like, you know, just the thought of the be, do, have concept. And and because um, I, I don't know if you've ever read a book called, I'm looking to see if I can find it, called um, uh, Be the Solution. That sounds familiar. Who's the who's the author? Uh, Daryl Rutherford. I no, I don't. I haven't read that I, one. I don't see it. Um, 
but Be the Solution is um, a fantastic bu- book. And it's about being, it's about who you're being, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And, um, but when you, when you lead a company with concepts like that, you, what, what, what I've experienced is agents say, yeah, you know, Greg, I, I, I wanted to join your company, join your team, because I really wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to become a top producer. I wanted to do a lot more business. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm with your company for a couple of years and, and I've achieved the success that I was wanting to achieve and maybe a little bit beyond what I'm realizing now that what I thought I was going to get from you, which is learn how to do top production was not what I really got from you. And that mm. is, I, I actually really learned how to live a life full of joy and happiness. Mm. And, and I look back cause I've heard that a few times within my company and I look back and I say, okay, well, what is it? What is it? How do you duplicate that in your organization? And you don't do it through, uh, you don't do it. You can't do it inauthentically. You can only do that authentically. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and when we talk about authenticity, authenticity is a being it's not a doing so you're not going to do the, you're not going to get people to say this because of what you do inside of your organization you're going to get team members and staff to say this because of who you're being within an organization so yes. i mean i i just know even i i know today more clear than i've ever known in our relationship uh, antoine that that who you're being that that the people in your organization have transformed their mm-hmm. own being because of your being. And I know that with there, there, it's almost impossible for that not to occur right. within an organization. So that's a big deal. And to me, it's one of the most, it's probably the biggest deal um, or biggest thing that we can ever achieve as leaders within an organization. Money is fun, but making yeah. a difference in someone's life is much more gratifying, you know? Absolutely. So good job on it. So, so where, where are you now in your in production rights? Your, what is your team doing now? I know you, uh, I think you re- reached over that hundred deal mark. Where are you? Uh, we're on, we're about 42 to 45 clothes pending so far this year. Yeah. Uh, I, I personally am, I, again, I'm just focused on just uh, really pouring into the agent. So I have, I don't have any pending or have. Yeah. You've stepped in. out of production. I, I'm completely stepped out. Yeah. And, and hopefully you are. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to say what I want the audience to know is like w- one of the things that Anton and I wanted to talk about is like these what we've talked about here so far is the essence of his team is the essence of, you know, what the essence that he brought to the team that now has allowed him to step out of production and now continue to develop others. You know, yes. and so what we wanted to share is like not not like, OK, how do you develop others? We wanted to share how do we get to where we are today? And yeah. at a future time, we can talk about where do we go from here? But it's mm-hmm. how do you get because there's a lot of people that want what you want and aren't mm-hmm. quite able to put it together. So that's kind of what we're trying to package for them. Yeah, yeah. And and the goal is to is to hit over 150 this year mm-hmm. uh, while having a net uh, about 30 percent net margin. Yeah, and great. have multiple six-figure earners within the company. Yeah, uh, we had one last year. The goal was to have two to three this year, and uh, the goal in in twenty, you know, the next year, twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three. I mean, really, the twenty twenty three goal is to get up to over three hundred, mm-hmm. and to have more of the organization built out to where I can bring up more leaders into actual leadership positions. And at that point, now I'm just strictly focusing on just training and not so much of the like one-on-one meetings and holding agents accountable but i'm just strictly coaching so we're we're continuing to grow um and and one thing i want to touch on is being a leader it's important to be vulnerable too Mm. it's important to be vulnerable as well for example last year 2020 with, with covid and everything going on there was a stretch where even with covid we were killing it i am very blessed and thankful that we, you know, <clears throat> I, I treated that. This is follow again to be a great leader. You got to be even better follower. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> when COVID hit in March, you know what I did? First thing I did is I dove into what Greg was doing every live. I don't care if it was a call with a mortgage officer in his, in his city. I'm on the call 
getting his guidance, having that pour into me so I can bring it back to the company. Due to that leadership, man, we had an incredible second quarter. It was incredible, even with the shutdown. In the third quarter, we came back to the office and I, I had an issue. We were making the most money. Everybody was making the most money they've ever made. Everybody was happy to be back in the office, but for some reason, Antoine was not happy. What is going on with me? I was not happy. I ended up getting sick with COVID. Hmm. A couple months later, I got sick with COVID. It really knocked me out. Got pneumonia and everything. Really knocked me out. But leading before COVID, before I got COVID, I was just, I, I find myself having low tolerance, um, impatient, not really happy. What's going on with me? I've never been in this position before. I should be excited, right? Things are going so well. Okay. COVID hit me. I think it was a, a time for me to spiritually kind of get where, where I needed to be. I had to slow down, had to be away from the office. And what I found out was number one, when you are growing, you gotta you don't grow one time and then you're good for the rest of your life. <laughs> it don't work that way. Yeah. You gotta always get clear every single day with yourself. I was unfulfilled was the problem. I was unfulfilled. I didn't have any principles. I wasn't being who I truly was. I wasn't, I didn't know how, I was just making more money and I, and I had this organization I was leading. So I had to take time and come up with three principles in my life and it changed my life forever. Three principles. And this was late third quarter, early fourth quarter. And my three principles, my three life principles, this changed my life. Listen, number one, I'm going to always, no matter what, I'm going to always be who I truly am. And a little, a little piece of that is I'm going to always show the best part of myself every single day. My second principle was I'm going to be good to myself. Meaning, and this was the most important one. This is the reason why I was unfulfilled. Being good to myself means I'm going to make sure my mental being, my spiritual being, and my physical being is where it needs to be. I was unfulfilled because I wasn't happy with who I was when I looked at myself and the way I felt my energy was up and down, right? Physically, I wasn't where I needed to be. And I'm still not there yet, but I definitely made a lot of progress. So number two was be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people. Show love mm -hmm. to people who show love to you. And that's why I started this podcast with my third principle, I wanted to show love to you because you show, you always show love to me. That changed, forget all the money, forget all the success. I am truly fulfilled in my life. And it has made me a better, it's actually made my wife a better wife. It's made me a better husband, a better father, which is most important to me. And now I step into this office and I am a truly a powerful leader. And now Everybody can feed off that, but I have now principles and I have shared that now with the, with the organization. They brought that to their, you know, our, we, we even have a, a, a family creed. I'm going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable and I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Every single child in my, ho in my home knows that by heart. We say it together every evening. That is true fulfillment for me is my family and how I feel about myself, my mental health, physical health, and my spiritual, and my emotional. And that is what leadership and growing an organization is really all about. Dude, so, that is, uh, uh, that is your mom going to watch this by the chance? You think you'll, your mom will watch it? She'll watch it. Oh, well, absolutely. Mom, yeah, mom, you should be proud. You, you've raised a great man. You really have. Yeah, you know, I, you. I just thank wrote you. down, yeah. Uh, thank her. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, mama. I love you, mama. <laughs> I, I just wrote down, you know, I was thinking, you know, I just kind of crossed my mind. It's like, God, what, what am I going to call this podcast? You know, what's the title going to be? And it just came to me. And it, it, what I wrote down here is leading you. Yes. Learn how to lead a powerful organization, learning how to mm. lead a powerful organization. But it really does start with what you touched on is leading you. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're really leading yourself. And, um, 
and, and, and that is just, that, that's phenomenal. So, you know, there's just Thank so you. many nuggets here and, um, you know, for the audience to, to, to pull off. And, you know, it's kind of like when we first talked prior to hitting the record button, you know, we just said, Hey, you know, let's, what, what you know, what are we going to talk about? And then, and then the tendency at that point is to like, talk about it. Right. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> right. Me and you, let's just like, now that we know how we'll start, we're going to hit the record button and let it go where we like, instead of like building a title and trying to fit the conversation in the title, what we did here, Anton, is we, we actually just had a conversation and allowed the title to just come to us, yes. which is just to me, one of the most fun like it's the fun it's the it's it's the most joyful way for me to do you know podcasts where we can just kind yeah. of freely communicate so hey man let's uh kind of you know wrap up with just making sure somebody because i i can imagine any real estate agent that has somebody going to the indiana state of indiana is probably going to want you to work with their clients or your team um mm -hmm. but uh what's the best p way, way for somebody to reach out to you if they want to ask you a question or maybe uh even send you a referral the, the best way is just Facebook, uh, mm -hmm. reach out to me on Messenger. I, I really don't get on Facebook often, but I do have the Messenger app on my phone. So if you if you message me, that's going to be the best way to reach me. Yeah, I know you and I message each other back and forth. That's kind yep. of our form of communication. And for me, you all, that's my preferred form of communication is just if you have any questions, just reach out to me, you know, uh, via Facebook, uh, uh, you know, Messenger. And also, you know, I just want you to know that, um, you know, we have built um, some real estate courses on the real estate sales solutions.com website. So if you'd like to get some additional coaching from myself and whatnot, go to real estate sales solutions.com, check out the courses we have and, and, and join us as, as much as you can want. I, can I say something about that? Yeah. Just so everyone knows how serious, because again, what we're doing, what Greg is doing, what I'm doing, what all these other great leaders are doing, what you're what you're doing watching this is we're we're contributing to to mankind, to to mm. the to the human race. As we grow as individuals, we give back and we can serve people at a higher level. I know without a fact, I feel my best when I can give value to someone. If I could speak powerful words into someone's beautiful words to someone and have them walk away with feeling better about themselves. Let's be great. Let's strive for greatness. Let's be truly remarkable. And I will say, he just mentioned he has uh, real estate sales solutions. Greg, you, you can look this up because I know you have access to it. I've bought, I think, 98% of every course. <laughs> wow. And I, and I don't yeah. even read, I don't try to look at reviews. It's, it, guys, you have to not be afraid to invest in you. And Greg is a legit guy to follow. Him and his whole team, Abe, Brendan, yeah. they're all great. Kevin Mills, I Kevin met Kevin. Mills, Me yeah. and Charles met Kevin. He's a great guy. Um, don't You got to do it. Otherwise, you're not truly showing the greatest part of you. What you're doing is you are, you are allowing your conditioning or whatever is happening in your current moment that, to, to change your mindset, to really just stunt your growth in life. Yeah. And just know... As you learn more, you grow more. As you increase your confidence, you make more money. And if you want to be in this position, there is no other way. Otherwise, you'll be growing an organization that has a revolving door of agents coming in and out. You'll have more frustration. You'll spend money places where it doesn't need to be. Plug in. We're in the information age. There is no excuse. Yeah. No excuse. You, yeah, everybody I, can win yeah. at a high level. I tell everybody, I, you know, I've told, said this many times, I, I, I think I'm one of the smartest guys in the, in, in the, in the, in the world. Now, please let me finish this. <laughs> um, and it's because Google is my best friend. I mean, any question I have, I just go to Google, like every answer, like, like we have to stop trying to be the resource and just become more resourceful. Yes. Whatever roadblock you have in real estate, in relationships, in sports, in cooking, in body work, on cars, whatever you need, you just have to have the ability to ask the question to Google and you'll have so many answers. You know, so, so we, we can go from zero to 100 real quick. I know that. <laughs> 
<laughs> we could probably do that real quick by yes. just like a much quicker today than we ever could because of the information that's out there. So, you know, um, so for those that want to learn more from um, any of myself or in, any of the, my collaborators, real estate sales solutions.com. Well, Antoine, thank you, man. I, 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 um, I was excited. I got up this morning thinking about you and uh, I'm more excited now probably for the rest of my day, how I'm going to think about the conversation than I was when I woke up, but I was uh, excited uh, to get with you today. So I really appreciate it. And on behalf of the audience that got the, the privilege to, to, to listen, I thank you for them too also. Likewise. And as always, I appreciate you without you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So again, uh, you will always be a part of my life, whether you don't know it that day or not. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was something I plugged into. I heard your voice at some point. So um, it was an honor to be on this podcast. And again, yeah, just continue to be you. I appreciate you. I'll do it, buddy. All right, man. You take care. All right. You too.